in the wake of globalization. The African cultural industry has gained importance on the world market. Painting, design, photography, sculpture and artworks from Africa are emerging with a confidence that embodies new expectations of a continent that is vibrant, connected and self-reliant. A continent that draws on its cultural strength and traditions and welcomes the changes that the future brings as well. This is what I realized on seeing the investment made in works of art adorning the hallways of the World Bank Group. From a family of five international organizations, the World Bank is noted to be the most influential, and the largest bank in the whole world with its mission of reducing poverty. But what has this got to do with artworks, paintings, and wall frames dotted all over its plush building in Washington, D.C.? Just come along with me. Let's find out more. Often, by word of mouth, of call for entries, and find people out before yes. they've been discovered. Yes, we and encourage artists to come to us directly. Give them exposure. This artist Scott with Doncourt, more senior artist in Cannes. Probably most people will know who he is uh, in your story. The reference he is making here is to the slave ships that uh, brought African slaves to the New World, so to speak. And contraposing uh, with them is this boxer. And I believe this is an American boxer who was fighting and white. People forge ideas, people mold dreams, and people create art. And this includes all people, whether poor or rich. So for centuries in Africa, as in the rest of the world, art has helped people celebrate their success, overcome their challenges, express their sorrows, and expose their hope and aspirations. This has brought about economic and social change in much the same way development does. Our goal is to support the mission of the bank through art. And how we achieve that is uh, trying to give a face to the different topics, if you want, that the bank is working about, and to show the wealth of richness of our member countries through the art, to the creativity of their people, to the strength of their ideas, to the energy of their dreams. And what has this got to do with the bank's mission of uh, reducing poverty? Well, reducing poverty is not only uh, working on building roads or building uh, schools or changing the laws. It has to do as well with um, giving space to voices of people, uh, allowing people to address topics that are relevant to their communities, to uh, pinpoint issues that may not be so visible or cannot be spoken about so freely. So artists generally are very acute social observers, so they can bring up different aspects of their society. They can be uh, ambassadors, if you want, of their societies. And in this way, I think, is a very important contribution to the fight against poverty and share prosperity, because it helps to break uh, barriers and to build bridges. In addition, it helps to challenge stereotypes. The collections include different African sculptures, paintings, drawings, handicrafts and mixed media. By showcasing their fine art through respective mediums, these artists become visual communicators articulating the past, present and future and expressing the changing dynamics of the world around them. They look, uh, if you look uh, under microscope, but he created an imaginary town As you know, the country has been conflict bubble in the ground as a, as a symbol of hope that something better is happening in the future. So instead of playing what's on the ground, he's going one level up. 
Interestingly, these artworks adorn the offices of the World Bank and greet you everywhere you go. For the bank, these hangings show respect for clients and reflect the bank's mission of bringing people and ideas together to dream the same dream, that of a world without poverty. In your own assessment, do you think this has been very helpful to the artists themselves and the World Bank group in general? In my own assessment, uh, we are a drop in the ocean, but I think uh, it's better to have a drop in the ocean than not have drops. We are a very small team uh, working on a shoestring. Uh, for most of our activities, we have to raise funds because clearly the, the budget of the bank uh, goes to operation, rightly so. But uh, I've seen the life of many artists have been uh, working with us changing. They have had access for the first time to uh, the international audience, so they could work scholarships, and their works got acquired by a different group of buyers, and so on and so forth. But most importantly, I think it gave them validation. And what I find over and over, we mostly work with emerging artists. For more, over and over, I've seen that artists were saying, well, it was the first time somebody paid attention to me, somebody gave me a space. And it gave them even credibility within their own communities. And because generally they are on the forefront of social commentary, having credibility is very important to lead to change in others. For the bank, I think has been important uh, some, if you want, a macro, some a micro, a micro way. Um, when we do project with country offices, it has been very powerful in building connection with the community. A very, uh, very important example, for example, um, was an exhibition we did uh, in Macedonia about climate change and together with the country office. And climate change was not a topic in the country at that moment. And through this art exhibition, suddenly it became a sport bar, if you want, a subject of conversation. So it had an impact on the bank locally. Generally, we have seen that we had exhibitions on important topics in which the image of the bank was uh, changed in the eyes of the viewer. Um, and the comment we get is, oh, I never thought the bank would care about A, B, and C. Uh, for example, years ago we had an exhibition on human trafficking, which has been traveling since and has been a powerful message from the bank uh, against one of the, if you want, uh, horrors of our society. Um, we have an exhibition coming up on uh, violence against women and girls, and again, I think, uh, helps the bank in its mission to fight gender-based violence. Yes, I think overall, even if we are so small, even if we do with essentially no money, everything, we had an impact. It's the, the force of ideas. And we are a platform for artists to talk to us. The bank has as many as 6,000 works in its collection, with 716 from Sub-Saharan Africa, most of them of contemporary artists. Of this, 36 are from Ghana. Ghana is well represented with works from masters like Professor Bloody Glover, Elena Soy, Kofi Dawson, Godfrey Donko, Kojo Eni, Tei Mensa Waji, Kofi Setoji, Eri Kwabla Wemega Kwawu, also known as Riki, Elana Tree, Kwesi Owusu Ankoma, amongst others. And their works are so expressive. My art is a celebration of the of what I'm in now, the culture that I'm in now, the contemporary culture that I live in. My work attempts to celebrate that culture. That's what I'm trying to do. What I don't look at is the, the thing they call modernity, the things that have come to uh, encroach upon the culture. When I think of a profession or a job or anything, it's something you, you must do to earn a living to chop. And sometimes you don't like doing it. Sometimes you are bored, you are tired. But art is one thing I do. Money or no money, I think I enjoy doing it. I love doing it. It is the only time when I'm in the studio, I feel good. 
and I can forget the world. Elena Soy is a Ghanaian, but lives in Nigeria and her work essentially belongs to the internationally connected high powers of art. Similarly with Abladi Glover, his paintings and techniques have influenced generations of artists across the globe. This piece by Godfrey Donko depicts victims of the slave trade and symbolizes the struggle faced by minorities to belong and blend into the mainstream. Medieta is one of Tay Mensa's favorite works. It is made of discarded pieces of aluminum sheet and tin collected around town. For him, he uses his creativity to address the menace of waste in Ghana. And he had had sewn and sewn all these parts to make a three-dimensional piece out of flat pieces of metal. And you will see that he's using old telephone wires uh, always here once in one of the tours who said, oh, look how interesting, so the teacher is teaching this way and his students are sitting and looking in a totally different way, so maybe they're not even listening. One perfect example is this. What they were doing is collecting pieces of rubbish from the streets and, of course, they were looking for things that look the same. Uh, pieces from him. It's all recycled material. Yeah, he always works with recycled materials. From the angle of this fountain, Tess' recycled work can also be viewed. Through his art, Kofi Satoji also tries to transmit the experience of an eyewitness in the Rwandan genocide. Kofi Dawson's work on the ant, which has been kept in storage due to its size, is no doubt the favorite of one of the bank's staff. made of peanut shell right. of a peanut right. which looked like they didn't put that on the customs it's whimsical it's yes. uh, it's very well made um, it's, it's a fun it's a fun piece and that was very original for us. how many aunts were there I don't know uh, I haven't counted them <laughs> like many, many yeah there's, there's 30 uh, there's probably 40 50 of them by presenting these works, each artist imparts the energy, charm, creativity, optimism, and vision for the future of a country, embracing its strengths. I know that there's artists in everybody, in all of us. You know, it's not only those of us who are calling ourselves or who are called artists who have the creative juice in us. It's in everybody, and the idea of giving freedom to people to 
configure my works is to kind of awaken that artist in them. There are times that I come in unexpectedly and, and I'll park my car elsewhere and, and walk in and uh, you hear a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, how do you call it now, banter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very loud banter. And when I go in then they all keep quiet. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> because I always demand that there is the HBI absolute silence in there, or as much silence as possible. Because I try to impress upon them that a studio is a, a sacred place that you come to do some bit of reflection and thinking. For each new, say, pattern or texture that I'm introducing, I have to show them how it's done. Because I find that as an artist, if you don't maintain physical contact with handling the material, for instance, the work might end up not having a soul. Okay, so. First of all, they have to do the units, we call them blocks, something, bottle caps together, you know, and so you take these units and then uh, start playing around with them. Then that when you now have to lay all of them out, scatter them in the studio and then start picking uh, what you need for each portion of the work. You put them together in a bunch and you, you try to see what it can suggest. The collection of artworks was started in 1941. Soon after its inception, the bank began receiving artworks as gifts to senior management and to the institution itself. Over the years, modest acquisition was developed with a focus on emerging artists from member countries. It was growing organically up until 1997 when the World Bank Art Program was established to manage the collection and link it to the mission of the World Bank. Um, we have been um, following in each other's steps and each of us had a different idea of what the, the bank art program should be and what a collection should be. So um, I think we have been uh, evolving considerably and I'm very proud to say I think is one of the most active art programs uh, within the development institutions around the world. So uh, it's been a great pleasure and uh, and an honor to work with artists. Um, generally what I do when I, I scout for artists is we do research from here for several months in advance. We talk to curators, to other artists, uh, clearly internet helps, but the best thing is to go to place and to, to meet with people, which I did at length. So I traveled extensively through Ghana. I met many incredible individuals uh, that are still very close to my heart. And we have been very honored to present Ghana in three uh, different exhibitions. The first, the largest one was Africa Now, which was a series of exhibitions that uh, included many countries of Africa, uh, 34 if my memory doesn't fail me. Then uh, we had an exhibition just on Ghana, in, which we organized in Paris. It was titled Going Going Ghana, uh, with several masters and uh, younger artists. And finally there was a celebration of the 50 years um, independence of Ghana that was presented again here in Washington. So Ghana has been uh, really a country dear to, to the art program and has been extremely well received both by bank staff and by visitors. The art production is excellent so it's worth to be presented. Art is my friend, art is my mother, art is my sister, art is everything to me. 
as we are talking is art yeah the way we dress is art the way we eat is art the way we work is art so like art is a daily activity we run through just that we pursue it in another different angle so people regard us only to be no all we do is art anytime i see my colors anytime i found my like colors hustling on the canvas here. oh i feel so much so much and also when a work is done i didn't just start with painting maybe i started with drawing and i would say it was my mother who tried to who got me into the art seriously like after having those hustling and bustling with my father after some time i came to her and she was like oh she found me just roaming about each day not doing anything so one time she was like oh could you you draw when you were you so why don't you go and pursue it and maybe you can do something with this and i was like no how can i draw only with pencil and survive so no she can take me to someone who guide me with a painting and whatever These artworks are great minds that have their own unique way of creating things that will tickle our fancy and also stimulate our imaginations. And perhaps people who probably think ahead of their citizens. And so the World Bank has stepped up the game of using these pieces not just as a way of decoration but also getting the artist linked to what they do to showcase their works on a wider platform and also to get value for what they do. Reporting from Washington DC, Rebecca Ewa, GBC24.